Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd appreciate it. And then I'd be able to send videos like this to your inbox as soon as tomorrow morning. If you like this watch, you can buy it. Buy, trade, and sell luxury watches on the Watchbox.com 24 hours a day and globally. Now this timepiece is the Zenith Pilot Doublematic. It was part of the 2012 Year of the Pilot's Watch at Zenith, and one of the standouts of the Baselworld novelties that year. Now discontinued, I can tell you with confidence, this is one of my favorite Zenith watches, one of my favorite timepieces from any brand, and among my top 10 of watches made in the modern era. Yes, that displaces certain watches I actually own. This is simply a timepiece I adore. And though 45 millimeters across the round of the case in diameter, you're going to find that this watch is almost small at 45, considering how many features and how much functionality is packed into this watch. So let's start with the size. 45 across the case does not include the three crowns and two chronograph pushers. The timepiece is 15.7 millimeters thick, but it will slip underneath a jacket cuff. Not a dress sleeve, but a jacket cuff should be all right. 52.9 millimeters lug to lug means this is a larger watch, and I would say the lower limit for wearing this watch is probably about 14 and a half centimeters wrist circumference. The timepiece has a 22 millimeter lug spacing that you'll find gives you a bevy of Zenith OEM options as well as aftermarket choices should you wish to accessorize. The case form, which fits easily on my wrist, as you can see, features short cropped and rather tightly downturned stub lugs to make this big watch wearable. You'll note the case back is regularly shaped, creates no pressure points or hot spots, and the strap is deluxe. Rather than using a more common aviator's calfskin, Zenith used an upscale and more durable and more expensive alligator leather, and not just any, but the premium large rectangular scale variety, dark brown. It features an aviator style contrasting stitch and it features a folded profile that shows you the layers of construction. You'll also note that underneath a rubber inlay for suplex against the skin as well as to isolate the leather from the oils, the heat, the moisture, the grit of the wrist. So you have upscale leather in alligator and you have protection for your investment in rubber on the underside. The clasp is nicely made. Externally, it's a combination of satin finish on the top of the buckle and polish on the flanks. Twin triggers release this buckle, so it can't pop open. It's not friction fit. It's very secure. You have to depress the trigger. Double deployant, note the entirety of it finished. No rough marks of machining or stamping. Fully finished, nicely made, and with the double deployant action, it's more suitable for a smaller wrist because it has two folding components rather than the one big up and over fold of a single folding clasp that can sometimes pinch a wrist. I'll also mention that the timepiece features a handsome case profile that you may recognize as, as a Zenith fan from the Chronomaster series. So the short stubby lugs, a partially rounded case profile that's not completely sheer. It does have a little bit of top to bottom curvature. It's fluid, it's handsome, it's all of high polish, and it has a small beveled transition from the flanks of the case to the satin finished hoods of the lugs. You'll also note that lozenge style chronograph pushers take you back to the mid 20th century, and there's a sharp geometry with a faceted and angled end to each lug. The crown itself is simple and zenith signed, and the crowns on the opposite side, equally Zenith star signed. We'll talk about their functions in a moment. The bezel is minimalist and conical, all of high polish like most of the case. And the sapphire itself is nicely domed with a box profile. This is not a default design. Like the clasp, it's a bit more highly considered, thoughtfully designed, and expensively specced than it truly needs to be. They could have gone with a flat crystal. I'm glad they didn't. Let's give ourselves a bit more aperture, lighten things up, and get closer to the dial. This is a world time alarm chronograph with a power reserve that moves, transforms, and changes color. Let's talk about what that means. Hopefully I have the alarm set to activate now. There's an on off toggle with a red or green alarm bell. Press the toggle at eight o'clock. And you can see the mobile power reserve for the alarm is going to change color and the wording full disappeared. It went from full on a green print to just green and now it's going to go from green to red. As you can see, that will run for a good long time. There's also a world time function and you can see that I'm in 
Philadelphia, so my reference city is New York. I'm on the east coast of the United States. And the world time features 24 marquee cities for the 24 principal time zones, meaning you can just reference the counterclockwise rotating 24-hour ring and see what time it is in any of the world's major cities or time zones. You'll also note that I can use that ring as an AM PM indicator for the city where I am currently. So for example, right now, it's about 4.30. Is it 4.30 in the morning or is it 4.30 in the afternoon? Well, I can see the semicircle that is dark with red numbers on black adjacent to New York. So I know that it is 4.30 in the morning. It is during the nighttime, early in the morning. And that's a useful reference even if you're not traveling. Now you can also keep track of far-flung friends and family using that ring. You can set your reference city at the index of 12 using the crown that is located at 10 o'clock. I'm gonna stay in New York, but if I wanted to change to Denver or Los Angeles, or perhaps I want to go to Mexico City, I have the ability to set my reference city and then use that to key all of the other time zones. Also important to note, double digit date, and it features a quick set function. So I've got a grand date, a world time function, a chronograph with a 30 minute scale. I have a mobile and animated color changing power reserve and an on off toggle for my alarm. Oh, oh yes, I have an alarm. A lot going on. Automatic winding, 36,000 vibrations per hour, 10 beats per second. It's still a column wheel El Primero automatic winder with a 50 to 52 hour power reserve. You can see as I cycle the chronograph functions, the column wheel interacting with the levers and horns of its mechanism. This is the caliber 4046, 41 joules, El Primero, Zenith manufacturer, 50 meters water resistant. You have the column wheel for crispness and you can actually see the lateral clutch moving into and out of contact with the chronograph driving wheel underneath the winding mass and you can even see the recentering hammers that fall on the hard cams to re-zero the chronograph. You can see two types of screws, blued screws as well as polished screws. The two different types of screws indicate those which are used for assembly of the components and those which are used for adjustment of the mechanism. That's why Zenith uses two different colored screws. And whereas not every automatic chronograph is interesting to look at, the Zenith absolutely is. Handsome, you can see most of the mechanism for the chronograph. The winding bridge and the winding mass don't actually obscure too much here. This is worthy of its display case back. A truly full featured timepiece. It even has an above average power reserve and an impressive history behind it. As in 1969, the Zenith El Primero, the base caliber of this 4046, was history's first automatic winding, fully integrated high beat chronograph caliber. You can see the sensational Swiss Army knife of a watch, the Zenith Pilot Double Matic, chock a block with features, and make it yours on the watch box. And we're back with the Zenith El Primero Pilot Double Matic. You can see those huge blocks of applied luminova. All of the numerals are applied blocks of solid luminova. There are broad satin finished hands that you can see are robustly luminescent. And I can even start the chronograph and you can see the movement of that oversized delta form luminescent index on the second sand. See this one by the light of day and make it yours on our website.